Welcome students, Tom Harmer here, your accounting professor. And this will be a study of the comparison between a W-2 employee and a 1099 independent contractor. We'll be looking at this from both the employer's perspective and the employee's perspective, the employee being you, perhaps, and also perhaps you as the employer. Now you've just finished studying your chapter in payroll. You've done all the exercises and you know how it's done. So now we're taking a look at a comparison. Okay, W-2 employee here and independent contractor here. So what we have, we have your gross pay. We've used $1,000 as our example here. Gross pay of $1,000. The independent contractor gets a check for $1,000. But the W-2 employee has deductions that are required by law that the employer has to take out of that paycheck, and that being Social Security, 6.2%, Medicare, and uh, federal income tax payable has to be taken out. Okay, so the net pay to the employee is $823.50. Now, the employee's expense is the $62, the $14.50, and the $100. Those are employee federal tax expenses that the employee paid, but the employer took it out on his behalf by law. Now, the employer gets the privilege of matching those expenses. So, he's the employer is matching that $62 the employee paid and the $14.50 here that the employee paid. He's matching those. Okay, and then additionally, the employer is required to pay federal and state unemployment tax to provide unemployment insurance for the employee. That's the employer's expense. And the workman's comp, or called labor and industries in the state of Washington, that can be a very expensive item depending on the type of work that's being done. But the employer is also paying that. So, and also the employer, I put in here the cost of doing all the payroll accounting. And so the, the net pay to the employee was $823.50. The employee's expense was $176.50. And the employer is actually paying uh, almost $1,300 for that $1,000 employee paycheck. So the total expense to the employer is about $1,300. Okay, now the over here on the 1099 contractor, that person received just a check for $1,000, job over, okay? However, the independent contractor still has to pay Social Security and Medicare, but, but the independent contractor, it's called self-employment tax, gets to pay both halves. So he's paying uh, a total of 7.65% twice okay so there it's doubled he doesn't have an employer paying half of it he gets to pay both halves and of course his federal income tax would be essentially the same okay so then after he's paid all of the taxes required he ends up with a net check of 747 and that's 7650 less than the w-2 employee because the employer sponsored half of the Social Security and Medicare for the W-2 employee, but the independent contractor gets to pay both. So there's a difference there. Now, one thing I might add is that this hasn't brought into, are there any unreimbursed expenses? Well, traveling to work is an expense that employers don't reimburse. So depending on how much that might be, if you're commuting 50 miles, that could be substantial every day. Uh, but if you're an independent contractor, you could be doing a Schedule C and deducting that as an expense and redu reducing your net income. Your Social Security, Medicare, and your in federal income tax is paid on the net income. So the more expenses you have to deduct here, the less your, your taxable income is going to be, which would reduce these numbers. So that's something to consider. Now, additionally, self-employed person... Uh, is not covered by uh, workman's comp or labor and industries. So if you're injured on the job, you do not have an insurance to cover you. Now, you may have personal health insurance. 
Oh, I'm covered. I've, I've got Regent's Blue Shield. I'm covered. Well, uh, they will ask you when you come in for the injury, or they will at the hospital. You'll be interviewed, and you'll be asked, how did this injury occur? If anything indicates that this hurt injury occurred while you were working, then your Regent's Blue Shield will not cover it because it's working, a work injury, and your health insurance, personal health, does not cover that. So that's an issue there. To a lot of people do not recognize that when they're self-employed, they think their health insurance have them covered when it doesn't. Okay, that's a big deal. Okay, also, if you go broke and you're an independent contractor, if you go broke or go out of business or you're the person that's contracting you quits using you and you have no more work, you have no unemployment insurance that you would as a W-2 employee. So there's advantages and disadvantages of, of being a W-2 employee versus independent contractor, but by and large, uh, there's a lot of benefits to being a W-2 employee. Okay, let's come down here. The lower part of this form here, I have some links that take us to, I, to the IRS uh, website on these various things. So we've got the definition of an employee. I put some basic ones here, provides tools. And um, if you control what will be done and when it will be done, how it will be done, then it's an employee. Now the issue here is if you're the employer and you have a bunch of employees that you're treating as independent contractors, which you like because you don't have all of this additional expense, right? It's just a straight, you know, you just cut their paycheck, gross, no deductions, no accounting required, just cut that check. Uh, you want independent contractors, ideally. But uh, if you're audited by the Department of Employment Security or the IRS, and they determine that this person you've been treating as an independent contractor is in fact an employee, and they can go back three years and they can charge you for all of the Social Security, Medicare, and FIC, the federal income, all of these items that you should have withheld from the check that you didn't, now they are billing you for, and you have no recourse to the, uh, to the independent contractor. He doesn't owe you. You paid him, you're done. You get to pay the IRS. It can be very ugly if you end up having an independent contractor uh, converted to a W-2 employee. I mean, it can put a person out of business depending on the number that they have and how many years back. And typically an audit doesn't happen for two or three years after a person has been doing whatever they're doing. So we've got our link here for a definition of employee. Let's go check that out. So that pops right to it. Okay, just an example there of how well that works. Here's a link to the definition uh, a video lecture. Now this one here goes to uh, uh, another publisher's lecture on W-2 employees and the criteria of of what an employee is versus a 1099 contractor. That's a good one to watch, but I won't click on it because it's a little slow on booting up. Here's a definition of an independent contractor by the IRS. Pops right over there. Independent contractor, self-employed. It has links here, all kinds. Common law it has other links so you can jump around real quick. I mean, these links are great. Okay. And then a uh, link explaining uh, self-employment tax. Okay, self-employment tax, as I mentioned before, is Social Security and Medicare paid by the uh, independent contractor, which is paying both halves. So it's twice as much as what the W-2 employee pays. So the advantages that, that accrue to the independent contractor, you know, one, you can deduct other expenses. Okay, now if you have job-related expenses that uh, that can't be deducted when you're a W-2 employee, but can be deducted if you're an independent contractor. If there's a large number, then that can make this whole thing turn uh, in the favor of being an independent contractor. Now, the Department of Labor and Industries does have an option for an independent contractor paying for the LNI insurance, but it's very expensive and I haven't researched that. If you were ever to consider that, that would be something you'd want to look at, but you'd have to religiously pay it 
in order to be covered. And you know, I think that for like uh, for like a logger, for somebody that's in the logging industry, it's like twenty dollars an hour for a logger. It's what the employer pays to the Department of Labor and Industries for that high risk type of job and it goes down from there but that's the highest but in any case you can see here from the employer's perspective it's more expensive to have a w-2 employee than to have an independent contractor but they have more control over the employee they can control their time and when they work they can tell them what to do and how to do it that sort of a thing plus these benefits that are provided attract the employee where an independent contractor is not getting any benefits. So if there is a high demand for employees in this particular niche that you're in, then the employers are going to be offering W-2 positions. But if there is, is an abundance of people that want this job that you're looking for, then the employers may be offering only a 1099 contractor position because they don't have to incur all these other benefits. And these are, this is a short list of benefits here. There's no, health, there's no uh, health insurance, personal health insurance in this picture we've shown here. There's just that workman's comp if you're injured, but you have other personal health insurance needs that uh, employers will do co-pays on, pay part of it for you. Also, you got life insurance, you've got uh, numerous other benefits, vacation pay, all of these other benefits that a W-2 employee uh, might be offered by the employer. 1099 contractor, no such thing. So there you go. There is a summary of a picture from the employer's perspective. He'd rather have you as 1099, but might have to offer W-2 in order to get you. Okay, from your perspective, being a W-2 employee has a lot of benefits that come that are paid for that you don't see as an employee, but they're paid for for you. And you have the unemployment insurance, you got the workman's comp. 1099 contractor doesn't have that, but they have their independence. They can deduct from that uh, gross pay that they receive other expenses and do their Schedule C when they file their tax return. So there you go. There's a comparison. Down here are videos that take you to more detailed information on those topics. And from this, I'll be asking you to do a little essay question where you evaluate a potential employment situation and make your argument for whether you would like to take that job as a W-2 employee or a 1099 independent contractor. Thank you very much.